and welcome to the 2021 pop culture preview show where we are discussing TV comedies and TV dramas. We had simply too much podcast last week and they made us cut it down so that the world could continue to function and not just get lost in our three hour podcast. When we come back, TV comedies. It's now time for the comedy of television, and for that, I'm going to throw to my senior correspondent for TV comedy, Greg. Greg, are you there? Get out of my way, suck butt. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I am here, Ryan. Okay, thank Uh, you. Thank you for that Uh generous introduction. The comedies of television, so important to us, um, people who want to distract ourselves just a little bit from the horrors of life. So the first thing we're going to do is go through uh, what... Like, what should have been on this list, uh, and maybe we'll replace some of the ones that we have on the bracket right now. Ryan, what do you think? What is not in our bracket that should be in our bracket? Greg, uh, I think because it came out too late. There's, a, there's, I think, two incredible shows that just came out too late, and people didn't watch them, or they just got ignored. Um, one, of, I hope that somebody brings up the other one, but one of them is How To with John Wilson. Which oh, yeah. w- was absolutely one of the best shows of last year. And it just came out at like December 27th of this year, you know? And I don't think people had time. But last it- year it was like one of the last shows to actually get released. And the very last episode is like, well, COVID times. Let's see how this works right. out for us. <laughs> and then he just walked around in empty New York. Yeah. <laughs> um, COVID really helped that show out. But this year it destroyed it, and so. But I do want it represented here. It sucks that it just came out too late and just got ignored. Because if you've seen even one episode, you know what a not only hilarious but like powerful and just like I don't, the beauty of filmed stuff. You know the, yeah. the the beauty of filming stuff and editing it is that show. And how interesting and unusual people are. So much of his show is like, hey, could I just follow you back to your house and watch you do stuff? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> People will agree to that, and then it's like so interesting and weird and, and such a big trip. That's a that's a great one, um, Cassie. What do you think is not? And I'm gonna I'll keep a little tab on these, and I, I might replace some of the ones we have. But I'm just gonna make a list first. Cassie, what do you think should replace one of our bracket movies? Greg, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I believe there's a show we've <laughs> talked about it before, and it's it's hard to get a sci-fi show on such a big bracket. But again, I'm gonna bring it up: Resident Alien. And yes, thank you for every- representing. <laughs> we got to. It's such. It's a surprisingly good show. It has heavy hitters. I don't know if it, people have heard of him. Alan Tudyk is in it. Hall of he Famer. Is, <laughs> he is an alien who is trying. He took over the body of a doctor and helping out the small town in Alaska. And it's absolutely delightful and surprisingly funny and surprisingly good for a sci-fi show. All right, I'd like to see sci-fi represented. Very cool. What do you think, Caitlin? What should be what should be on this list? Greg, I'm going to continue screaming about this show because I just think it's so great. And um, you know one of the stars, Olivia Rodrigo. Yes, it's season <laughs> two of High School Musical, the musical series. <laughs> Fucking watch it. God damn it. McKenna, I know you've watched it. You know it's fantastic. <laughs> Tell these people why. Why they need to see this. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo, I think, speaks for itself. You could just sit yeah. here, her sing all the time. I will say, though, I don't think it's as good as season one. It it yeah, just didn't yeah. it didn't have the same. I mean, it's a breakup spark. season, so it's not yeah. as um, exciting, comedic or <laughs> exciting. I thought it was I remember, comedic. I was laughing. I remember the seasons of Insecure where Molly and Issa were not friends, and that those were some of the tougher seasons for us all to get through. I think as a nation. Um, well, that's <laughs> not going to go anywhere, Mike. What do you think? Uh, and uh, feel free to say a real show in its second season. It, it no, I, I feel like nobody's talking about it. It might be even funnier than the first. It is so weird and awesome. The great is stupid funny. Hell yeah. I'm laughing the whole time and wondering, is this what happened? And being like, no, it can't be. But I'm waiting for the show to be done before I look up anything because I don't want spoilers to learn how Catherine and Peter actually die. Do not let history spoil a good show. No, I refuse to. It, it's yeah. so fucking funny. These two are like one of the best modern Abbott and Costellas we have, the way they play off of each other. I fucking love these two kids. And a bit of an ensemble cast, right? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, up and everybody, down, and it's cast. so funny, yeah. 
All right, very good. What do you say, books? What should be on this list? Uh, I'm breaking the rules um, with my pick because it's Taylor it's Swift. Not <laughs> <laughs> just Taylor Swift. No, it's not classified necessarily as a comedy, but I found it very funny. It's a docu series. It's called Lula Rich. It's about all the people who got duped in the MLF scheme, um, and I just think it deserves a place somewhere on the Bodies because in, in the what scheme. The multi-level marketing of Lula oh, Row. Pyramid schemes. Yeah, Pyramid Schemes. Nice. Uh, it's all a docuseries on all these people who fell for Pyramid oh, Schemes God. of ugly ass leggings and <laughs> it's just it's brilliant it's there's a whole segment of a former employee harping about how he can't listen to Kelly Clarkson anymore. You should definitely <laughs> check it out. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take from this list the great and I'm going to replace yes. Mythic Quest, a show that I really liked, but you know, Ooh, what? wow. <laughs> but you only have so many shows that you can you can move around. So uh, that is what I'm doing. The rest of those good shows. The one that's really is a shame is the How to with John Wilson. I that could like win everything, but it just came out at such an awkward time, and I haven't seen any of it. So I can't, in good conscience, remove any of this other stuff. All right, so let's go to the matchups. Our first matchup is number one seeded Reservation Dogs. As this, I predicted before the end, uh, before this year started, Reservation Dogs would be the number one seed. As everybody knew, everybody was like, whoa, Native People's show about what it's like to live on a reservation and deal with that? Of course, America's going to line up to watch that. Versus number 16 seed, Girls 5 Eva. Ryan, give us a little explanation of what Girls 5 Ever is. Girls 5 Ever is uh, a show where it has a song called New York Lonely Boy. And it's about the <laughs> yes. little, the, the well-dressed children in New York that you just see roaming around, almost parentless, like reading poetry that they clearly can't understand. Uh, it's just, that, that's a magical moment in television history. Girls 5 Ever comes from the uh, producers that brought us uh, Unbearable Kim, or Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, right? Yeah. And it feels like the intellectual sort of like successor of those shows. Yeah. Whereas I feel like, Reser- Go, Ryan. I feel like between 30 Brock, Kimmy Schmidt, um, Great News, yeah. and Girls 5 Ever, we've almost always had one of their shows on. And now Mr. Mayor, which, you know, some of the like lesser returns for some of those shows, but we've always had one of their shows on at all times. But- and then Reservation Dogs is like the opposite, right? Which is like a completely new like property right i i can't believe how good reservation dogs is it seems so hacky it's like kids who uh like we're gonna make these kids look like quentin tarantino watching gangbangers and this show uh, uh, this is the atlanta of this year of like you don't know about this place we're gonna inject you into this place and we're gonna show you all of these amazing characters i cannot believe how rocked i was by this show and the acting is so good. And it really puts the lie to the idea that you have to just keep using the same crop of comedic actors. The, this show sets for itself a, a very tough task of just using like actual, the you know, like Native American actors, indigenous people, actors. And it suffers not an iota for that. They're the- so talented and so amazing. And everybody is delivering like killer performances all the time. There's a show that we're going to talk about later, which... Uh, again, proves what a stupid white idiot I am because I think that there's one type of thing, and so like I, I like because of movies and TV, I sort of thought there was there's one type of person on the res. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like <laughs> this thing I have seen from TV and movies, and the wide variety of uh, types of actors and types of like looking people, and uh, I cannot believe this show. There's and, like there's a character that's like a, a a Native American spirit from back in the day. And then the the actor's performance of that is yeah. like so modern, and it's like that juxtaposition never stops delivering. He's just like tired of it and lazy. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, and- spirits get fat. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and it's part of the McClarnessance. I don't know if you can call it McClarnessance if people are only becoming aware of how great Zon McClarnon is. He was the dad, Echo's dad, in Hawkeye. He was in uh-huh. the he was the yes. crazy, scary badass in Fargo season two, uh-huh. and he's the cop in this. This guy is so fucking good, and more people need to be respect on his name. All right, well, let's put a vote to it. Is it going to be, Ryan, number one, Reservation Dogs, or number 16, Girls 5 Eva? I was a Girls 5 Eva preacher yeah, for a long time. For sure. But I think Reservation Dogs is untouchable at this point. Yeah. Cassie? Um, you guys have sold both of these. Uh, I want to watch both of them, but you have really sold Reservation Dogs. So Do you watch I'll... both of them. That's a great yeah. point. Do you watch both of them, but Reservation Dogs. Um, Caitlin? <laughs> 
dog. That's a bark. Dog bark. Okay, Mike. Uh, I want the world to love Busy Phillips as much as I have my entire life. And Girls Five Ever showcases her so well. Yeah, ha- this is the best Busy Phillips we've ever had. It has to be Reservation Dogs. But what's her name from <laughs> Hamilton? What? Oh, Renee uh, Elise, Elise Goldsberry. 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 She, and she Sarah Bareilles. Yeah, yeah, they have real singers in this. But yeah, Renee Elise Goldsberry is hilarious as like the off a rocker diva. She's been miscast in some stuff, uh, notably Altered Carbon. I felt like she was really misused in that. She's perfect in this. Like, I like, cannot believe what, what how talented she is as a comedic actress. Did, did you guys see when she moved an invisible piano into Sarah Bareilles' yes. home? <laughs> yes. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> when she says uh, in the first episode, uh, I shoot geese at the airport and I get paid by the goose. <laughs> My wife and I had to stop the, the, the show so that we could just laugh forever. Um, books? Uh, it's going to be Reservation Dogs, but I do want to watch both of these very badly. Congratulations to Reservation Dogs. Our number one seed, and you will, I promise you, you will see why. Uh, up next is number eight, Dickinson, a show that we know is about Emily Dickinson. Uh, nobody on this show has seen an episode from season two, right? Has mm-hmm. anybody seen any season two episodes? Um, I saw a little bit from season one. It looks like a funny, clever show. It's The audience looks like it's for like between 15 and 20 years old. And this stars and- Kate Bishop. As yeah, there's Kate the Bishop, the Charles Dickens' son. <laughs> it looks cool. It looks fun. It looks like it's for the kids, but it's going up against my pick, number nine seed, Southside. Uh, Mike, what is Southside? It Southside. is. It's somewhere in between like a sketch show and a sitcom. I don't yeah. know where to put it, but it's these the this collective of people who who work at RTO, which is a rent to own repo. They they. You can rent a laundry machine, but if you don't pay, they'll come and steal it from your house. And just this cast of characters, you, you meet the cops, you meet the public defenders, uh, the, just the people who are scammers and gangsters. It's so fucking weird and funny. And it's so weird, right? How it, like it it's... slowly opens up and you get to know more and more of the neighborhood and, and just such a feel of a lived-in, unique place. Love it. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, it, it the the show hit the ground running in season one, and season two is maybe I think it's a slight step back, but it's still so strong and such a realized three dimensional property, and it surprises me every single episode. Like mm-hmm. it's always coming out of a, a different direction than you expect. Do you agree with that, Ryan? There's one other show on this bracket that uh, makes me get tired of laughing. Like, all right, episode, you have done it. Like, I can't do it anymore. And it's because you're so fucking witty and comical that, like... But, like, I don't have it anymore. And that's what I think that the a lot of the Faye... Uh, Carlock? What is his name? Carlock? Carlock shows used to do, you know? Yeah. It's just, like, I'm so tired of laughing. Uh, Southside is one of those, like, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. And the fact that it all hangs together, that it's not officially a skit show... Yeah. ...is that much more impressive. All right, well, let's get voting. I'm excited by this. Books, what do you think should move on? Number eight, Dickinson, or number nine, Southside? I I think Dickinson has merit. I definitely think it belongs on the bracket in many ways. I think it's very interesting, but I'm more excited by Southside, so that gets my vote. All right, Mike? Southside. Caitlin? Southside. Cassie? Southside all the way. Ryan? South side. Yeah, uh, you will not be disappointed with this. If you have not seen this show, you are in for a real treat. And I uh, haven't seen all the episodes from the season, so I'm in for a real treat. <laughs> <laughs> I want us to do a thing though later where we all we cast us as characters from the show. Like, oh, who, I'm totally the I'm totally the the like chubby good night wants to follow the rules. Your <laughs> officer, good night for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is not in doubt, Greg. <laughs> That's not what the purpose of that was. <laughs> All right. Up next is our number four seed and still, I think, cultural darling, Ted Lasso versus number 13, Starstruck. McKenna, I... talk to me about Ted Lasso. Is it still the magic for you? I think it is. I think this season, I think what this show does, it doesn't become predictable, at least for me. Um, it does try new things. I do think this season was less comedic. Then mm. season one, it deals with a lot heavier stuff, but it still has... Maybe more feel-good, but less comedic? Yeah, but I think it still has a brilliant balance of humor plus like re- representation of humanity. And oh. yeah, I, I loved it. I think it's still charmed everyone who's watched it. Ryan, do you agree with that? Uh, I thought it was fine. 
Ooh, I'm more on ooh, that side There was too. a blunt abruptness to that. <laughs> well, look, dude. I if it, if it wasn't going up against what it's going up against, then I'd be like, yeah, tell us, hooray. Okay, tell us about Starstruck then. Uh, Starstruck is a six-hour or uh, I'm sorry, three-hour, less than three-hour rom-com show, Reverse Notting Hill, right, where the boy is the celebrity and the girl is not, uh, and it stars um, Rose Matafeo as Such a talent Holy as the star and. Guys, if you thought Phoebe Bridgers Waller yeah. was going places like this, she is that like she is she should just be handed all of the projects that she wants forever. She is so charming that it almost ruins the premise of the show, which is what happens if a celebrity gets with her normal yeah, person. I don't care. I don't care. No, She'll be like, more of her. I mean, yeah. She is the catch in that couple. Like that it, that is a legit complicating factor. Like she's so charming, so funny, so amazing that you forget that he's supposed to be the famous one. But, but he not- gets that. Like, that's yeah, what I think he, makes it work, is he the whole time oh, knows yeah. that as a person, she's more interesting than he is. Totally. And this uh, made me realize that, like, if you are a female actress, you, and if you don't want to be, like, a Mary Sue or, like, a uh, Super Vanilla or just, like, a Bitter Shrew, you have to write your own shit. Yes. Because this this lady, this character is so complicated, so awful, and so funny, and so awesome, that that's it's the only way that's going to happen. And I think we did learn that from Fleabag. If you have not seen this show and you're on the panel and you're going to vote, one thing I want to say is the comparisons to Fleabag, that's not an idle thing. This is like this year's Fleabag. It is so good. It's so powerful. And it's more entertaining than Ted Lasso, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, I, I think Ted Lasso, It was I, I enjoyed the second season as well. It was fun to watch them do the things they all do. But what... Rose and company are doing with Starstruck is phenomenal. And I fucking love rom-coms. And to modernize a rom-com in this way without being like, but aren't rom-coms stupid? Like fully embracing what it is, I think is very cool. Cassie, are we clowning on uh, Ted Lasso a little bit? Is this undeserved? Do you think everyone's saying it's taking a step back? No, it's it's deserved. It took a step back. It was not. It didn't. I don't. I think the hype was too much. I think we weren't like everybody was blown away from it. So maybe it's just because expectations were so high. But it definitely took a step back for me. And I think it's mainly because like they felt like they the plot felt like they were stretching for it. Like they created this villain. They were like, we need something. And I was like, do you? Or do you want to be Ted Lasso? And I was like, all right, you can. It was. It's fine for me. You could dunk on it. Also, season ones just lend themselves to these brackets, you yeah. know? Like, this is new. And then Ted Lasso season two wasn't that new. And then what, where it wasn't new, like, uh, I was watching Ted Lasso. I was trying to keep up with it when it was coming out, and I just stopped. And yeah. the world did not make me pay for that. Like, nobody cared that I stopped watching Ted Lasso. Well, Mike, what should move on, Ted Lasso or Starstruck? Holy shit! Uh, I started Starstruck on Thursday and was like, well, I will watch one. And then I watched yeah. all of it. So <laughs> it's, it's gotta be starstruck. <laughs> Cassie, what do you say? I'm very excited to watch it. Starstruck. Nice. Ryan. Fuck the second season, dude. Let's get yeah. starstruck. Moving on. <laughs> it just doesn't work for these things. Uh, what do you say, Caitlin? Um, I trust Mike wholeheartedly whenever he says he likes a rom-com. Oh, so oh, I, yeah. oh, I, oh, I yeah. trust oh, this so I much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so excited to watch Starstruck now. It's so good. So like you guys are making a great choice, books. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I feel like we maybe dunked on Ted Lasso a little too much. I still think season two is worth watching. I did enjoy it. I do think it has some merit. I just don't think it's quite the comedy that season one was. So I'm going to go with Starstruck, but I don't think Ted Lasso destroy, deserves Starstruck to Starstruck like, is destroyed. literally compelling in that you will be compelled to watch the whole thing as soon as you start it. Like it's, <laughs> you can't stop. It's not just that you will uh, like sign a contract to see anything that Rose Matafeo does for the rest of your life. You will yeah. watch it. Yeah, you're like to be, you'll be so glad to know her name. You know, you'll be like, oh, good. Next time, a, like a comedians come up, I'll have a, a new name to throw out there. Up next is number five, What We Do in the Shadows, a show that we've all seen. Versus number twelve, Schmigadoon, a and show... one last year, and one last year. Oh yeah, it's it's the <laughs> reigning comedy of the year. Uh, versus uh, Schmigadoon. Let's start with Schmigadoon, Ryan. What is Schmigadoon? Schmigadoon is a COVID filmed <laughs> show, Greg. And I saw a lot of COVID filmed shit. Like uh, Succession was filmed COVID, and you could tell um, a little bit. It's not Arrested Development. Let's never have the cast relate bad. But the, we talked about this earlier. The Great did the Great. Did they just shoot that on like green screens? It yeah. felt like they weren't actually in the castle, like uh, in that place. Yeah, there's a part I remember where um, 
Fanning. Elle Fanning was walking downstairs. She was not. No. Those stairs aren't there. <laughs> it looked like Wakanda. But Schmigadoon is like, uh, <laughs> let's build one room where nobody else can enter. And, you know, and it, the goal worked because we have to make it look like a very specific thing of like a 1950s musical. And yeah. it's like, it's not 1940s or 60s with West Side Story. It's 50s. It's this very like, uh, we are an honest set. Everyone knows, like, uh, two mules for Sister Sarah or uh, Oklahoma. Like, we're clearly yes. on a set right now. Yeah. And it worked on that. And then on the flip side, man, is what we do in the shadows this season more disappointing than Ted Lasso season two? What? Really? Really? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mike, do you agree with that? I do not agree. I think... What we do in the shadows did not lose anything. It's super yeah. fucking funny. Colin Robinson dying and that uh, <laughs> like spoilers. What's his face? Uh, Jackie Daytona is actually sad about it. Like in the background, the two of them just forming a friendship because everybody else is too busy to deal with their bullshit. Uh, it was awesome. I thought this year, like I've always liked Matthew Barry in this show. I thought mm-hmm. this season was the season that he just ultimately like established himself as the okay. center of the show. I'm only four episodes in, but what I've noticed about these four episodes is a severe lack of Matthew Barry. Oh, okay. Well, maybe they maybe they correct that. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff with Nandor and everything. I who does anybody agree with Ryan that this that this season of what we do in the shadows has taken a a step backwards? That's no. just crazy talk. No. Everybody wild. just there's a Twilight crazy. episode, guys. <laughs> there's a Twilight episode. All right. Well, then I think that uh, means it's time to get to voting. Ryan, is it number five? What we do in the shadows, the reigning best comedy, or twelve? Schmigadoon, a small room musical. I watched all of Schmigadoon, and I did like it. You know, there's a lot to appreciate. Um, Cicely strong? strong, strong is an amazing actress, and I really yeah. do hope that she goes places. But no, it's what we do in the shadows. Cassie, agree? Agree. It's got to be. Caitlin, agree? No, kickball scene. It's, it's, it's <laughs> what we do in the shadows. <laughs> Mike, do you agree? Yeah, the nicest thing I've heard about Schmigadoon is people say, yeah, no, it's good. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with what we do it's, in the shadows. It, it's definitely more of uh, something to appreciate than enjoy. It's one of the uh, better shows on Apple TV <laughs> books. <laughs> what we do in the shadows, moving on for you? Oh, absolutely. All right. Congratulations. What we do in the shadows. Up next is number two, Hacks, a show that I'm worried came out too early and that maybe we might forget how freaking incredible it is, versus number 15, we talked about it a couple times, The Great. Let's start with Hacks. Mike, what is Hacks and why should we care? So Hacks is about a Joan Rivers type, like trailblazing female comedian who's done- Played by Gene Smart. Played by Gene Smart, the incomparable Gene yes. Smart. And He's having a moment for like the last five years, and it's yeah, awesome. So I want to say good. future pop filter Hall of Famer, dude. Yes, it's I think that's why it is yeah, happening. It's going. Uh, it's going to happen. And she's working towards her twenty fifth hundred show in her residency <laughs> in Vegas, uh, and then a like twenty something young early twenties comedian who gets kind of booted out of Hollywood. She fucks up, and nobody will hire her, so she ends up being writer for Gene Smarts. And it's just about these two women at very different points in their career, different parts of the world. Uh, meeting and bonding. I think it's so hard to write a show about comedians and have it stay funny. Yeah. And this is hilarious the whole fucking time. Let's they also come- point out that Gene Smart is being antagonized by a much older former golfer, Shooter McGavin. Yeah, Shooter yes. McGavin. <laughs> he's so and- good. And he's a handsome son of a bitch. They have a whole... Still like- is, right? Yeah, yes. they're, they're enemies, but they also have a whole will-they-won't-they they thing, yeah. which is yeah. legit hot and really does work. Um. Yeah, and just such an incredible show. You know, the, it, it's about an older and younger comedian, but they have and they come from different worlds. Yada yada yada. But they have the same sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And when they really get going, it, as you said, Mike, it has to be funny in those moments, and they actually make it funny yes. in those moments. I think that's why the show. And a big a big part of it too is that Gene Smart will react to something that Hannah says, and it's like, huh, I get that. And then there will be uh, times where Gene Smart belly laughs. Right. And yes. those different levels of comedy of like, yeah. you got me to think that that was funny and you got me to guffaw. And uh, I feel it's like, such an important part of the show. I feel like, and maybe I'm, oh, maybe this is wrong, but I feel like we have a lot of stories of like men with their mentors or women with their male mentors, mm-hmm. but we don't have a ton of stories about women with their female mentors. I feel know? like we could use more with men with their mentors. Male mentors, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. For the boys. Okay, number two, Hacks versus number 15, The Great. McKenna, where are we going? Uh, are we going straight to a vote? Sorry. 
Yeah, it's voting time. Okay. Um, Hack sounds delightful, and I'm very excited to see it. I do love The Great. I think it's a delightful show, but I'm going to go with Hacks. All right, Mike. Uh, the Great is here because of me, and but <laughs> okay. it's going up. Yeah. Well, I that's, submitted That's it. a lot of shit to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's going up what I think could win pop culture of 2021, yeah. Hacks. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, guest star, superhero show show favorite, Deke. Is in a couple of episodes of Hacks, and I love this guy. I want him in more things. So, did you Hacks. think it was a little too inside baseball when he busted out all those lemons? Yes, I was like, this is for three people in the world, <laughs> but we are among those three people. Ryan, what's moving on? Oh, it's Hacks. For sure. I, I think that the Great is a drama, so I think that it could be brought up in the next segment and be okay. Yeah, but it's Hacks. We live in a time where there's a lot of transfer between those two things, right? Our dramas and our comedies. Cassie, what do you say? Hacks. All right, Caitlin. I mean, it doesn't matter, but the great. <laughs> <laughs> not that it matters. Not that anything matters. All right. Up next is number seven, and I feel like darling of this show, but not known by enough people in the in the wider world. The other two versus number ten, known by everybody and enjoyed by everybody. I think you should leave. Let's start with the other two, Cassie. What is the other two, and why should I care? Yeah, like you said, the darling. It's an absolute darling. Season one, we were introduced to these characters who their little brother was famous, and they were the fuck ups. Their little and brother is essentially a Justin Bieber type. A Justin Bieber. Chase and dreams. The second the second season, we um, you're like that's already a great premise. What do you do with the second season? You give these fools power themselves. You give them power <laughs> and money, and you have a beautiful second season no, that you follows give it them up what they think they want. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, Damn well, them with what they want. Yeah, <laughs> and it is as disastrous as you want it to be, and you think it would be, while still being just as hilarious as the first. I can't. This was the other show I was mentioning. I, this is our Olivia Rodrigo versus uh, Lil Nas X. Of, yeah, this uh, is matchup. devastating. Um, but I cannot. But this was the other show I was referencing when we were talking about Southside of hyperventilatingly laughing. Yes. Mm-hmm. The other two is the funniest show on television. And I can't believe what they did with their, like what Cassie said, post premise. But right? we are now yeah. in post premise. And so we gave Molly Shannon the chance to be like a uh, talk, show host? Talk, talk show host. <laughs> And so now our parents and our younger siblings can be successful. We just know that we cannot be. Uh, (laughs) This is the funniest show on television. It's so good. Now, it's going up against something that that people might think of as the funniest show on television. Kind of a low seed, I think you should leave. Um, Is there a chance for this, Caitlin, or I think you should leave to beat the other two? Oh, God. The problem is these both are hilarious. And I think you should leave. It's bringing its same, same really great you know, comedy in this. Um, but honestly, I, I loved the other two. I ended up walking in the room while Cassie was watching it. And I was, I just couldn't move because I was just it. laughing. It grabbed me. <laughs> so th- I think part of the problem is, so both of these are in their second seasons, right? And so th- yeah. that, that new versus not new, we don't have that going on, but I think the other two grows and deepens and we get to know the characters more. And I think you should leave in the first season. When we talked about it on this show, all we could do is scream lines from it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and when I think of it, and I, I enjoyed the second season, but all I can think of still is season one sketches. Nothing. Well, really not even. I, there's too much shit on me because that became like the. <laughs> oh, yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, the meme so that of the of, of the day. I feel like is like I don't want to totally be here anymore. The modern condition. I want to. Like, yeah. I'll- I want to point out, too, that I think that really rocked the world. One is, there's too much shit on me, and I want to die. Like, the guy was willing to, like, just commit suicide in the spot. I don't want to be around anymore. <laughs> and the other one was the, the funeral scenes. The uh, coffin. Oh, the coffin. Oh, okay, okay. That's, 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 that, TV, yeah. that's an important part of our pop culture in 2021. I wish T-Money were here, because he can do that whole bit perfectly. <laughs> like, seriously, like, all the pauses. Oh, sh- the, they told me that at a dinner. That one, okay, that is a great sketch. I didn't rig shit. <laughs> and, you know what? I didn't like, do this. <laughs> nothing has hit the level of, did Santa Claus come early? Yeah. But uh, early. another one is uh, the old professor at the table uh, about to take the burger away from the guy. <laughs> and just, he just won't take the burger away. I'm going to eat the whole thing. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Cut. Wait, we is that, have, okay? I, it might be that I've forgotten what season two and what season we one. We do have Patty Henderson's uh, like I can't stop drinking wine. <laughs> I can't watch a movie without drinking a whole glass of wine and a big bag of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> and her awesome. her table renting business. 
Yeah. The table lynching. <laughs> <laughs> is that the same? Is that the same character? It's the same actress. <laughs> Don't okay. mention the table. Somebody pointed out that we did not do that thing, and then <laughs> immediately did yeah. it. So now I'm going to bring it to a vote. Listen, this is not easy. This is the toughest one. We're fucked, right? We're not. It, we're going to be sad no matter what we do. Everybody, just suck it up and do it. Caitlin, what's it going to be? Number seven seed, the other two, or number ten seed? I think you should leave. God, I laughed so hard with both of these. Um. I'm like lightheaded right now from laughing, but I'm gonna go. With, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the other two. The other two, Cassie. What do you say? This is literally the hardest thing of my life and the most hurtful yeah. thing. How dare you guys do this? <laughs> but I think more people know. I think you should leave, and they need to give the other two a chance. So the I, other two. I like that reasoning. I like that reasoning. Uh, Ryan, what do you say? Yeah, it's just it's watching these characters grow. I looked at. I just watched the other two, or like a couple days ago. So three days ago, I was like, "Oh, I think you should leave." That's a slam dunk. And then watching the other two. Like, it's so funny. It's so interesting. It's the other two. Do you agree, Books? I do. I think the other two moves on. Mike, what do you say? I concur. The other two. What yeah. a fucking bummer, Tim Robinson. I'm so Ooh. sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna vote. I'm gonna vote for I think you should leave because I think it deserves one vote. But I have to say I'm excited that the other two moved on. So for whatever that is worth. Um number three. Only Murders in a Building, starring young whippersnappers of comedy, Martin Short um, and Steve Martin, uh, versus number 14, the final season of Insecure. Ryan, what else can we say about Only Murders in the Building? Uh, Selma Gomez was the best part. Yeah. Uh, you, as said I vo- that you love Selma Gomez, right? S- Selena. Her name's Selena, though, right? You love Selena Gomez, right? I'm Selma Blair. I'm talking about Selma Blair. I realized watching the show, it's so it's so cute, Ryan. I know why you like Selena Gomez. She's like your wife. You just have a crush on your wife, you sicko. Why? Why, why do you say that? Because she's good at solving murders? <laughs> because she's dark of hair and they have similar voices and they're both funny. I don't know. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, All right, guys. I will, next time you ask me a question, I will leave you alone. Good, <laughs> good advice. Uh, only Murders was a return, or no, like the first chance we have gotten in decades of seeing Martin Short and Steve Martin on TV. And that yeah. was amazing. Yeah. And then Selena, okay, I'll say her first name correctly, Selena Gomez <laughs> uh, was great as well. I thought all three of them were awesome, and this was one of the few shows of this year where I was like, I gotta watch it, or it's gonna get spoiled for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mike. Yes. What did you think about this season of Insecure? It's They're trying to bring in it for landing, but watching everybody... People are getting versions of what they want, and it's not they because they don't live in hell like the other two do. Uh-huh. So they're not always. It's not the worst thing in the world when they get what they want. But watching how they deal with that and how they're growing, we have Molly and Issa working their way back together. So like the best part of the show is getting there. Yes. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and it, yeah, it's it's that 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 new show Glow is not on it, but I think it's it's phenomenal. And it was this is important. It was funnier than it had been in three i mm-hmm. laughed so hard at this season dude uh, Issa there's this, Rae is so funny there's this new character of Issa ray in the mirror upset at not in the mirror Issa ray yeah where she's like oh you better not <laughs> that is the funniest character of the year to me Issa ray has done a really good job of like she can take a totally regular line mm-hmm. and make it so funny um, that it really works. All right, let's go to voting time. McKenna, is it number three, only murders in the building, or number fourteen, insecure? Uh, I'm going to go with only murders in the building. All right, Mike, what do you say? Insecure. Ryan, this is not unlike other two versus. I think you should leave. This is the other hardest one. Yeah, this is very difficult. And I loved only murders, guys. It was about podcasting. Like, oh shit, <laughs> change my really vote. Is. <laughs> but it's insecure. All right, Cassie. Uh, it feels disrespectful with the comedy heavy hitters. Uh, uh, only murders in the building is what I'm going to vote. All right, I like how this is how this is shaping up, Mike. What do you say? Uh, once again, I say insecure. <laughs> did you already vote? I did. Okay, books. What do but you, you say? can give me two votes. That's fine. I I I, I could have two votes too. It's only murders in the I, building. I'm the only one. Who I'll go. Voted. <laughs> right, I'll go. Caitlin, you vote. Sorry. Oh, who me? I- Caitlin. Uh, <laughs> uh, only murders in the building. Only murders in the building. Is that everybody voted? Yes. <laughs> Except for me. Uh, and you know what? I will go only murders in the building. Why not? Let's move on. Number six, we are lady parts 
Mike, what is We Are Lady Parts? We Are Lady Parts is like a, a BBC import to Peacock, uh, but it is about an all-girl Muslim punk band in London, and our main character, Amina, is not from the punk world. She's just a virtuoso guitarist, and she falls in with these hooligans and realizes punk might be more fun than trying to find a husband on a wedding app. Uh-huh. And so she's going through her struggles. And this, does she also this, have nervous tum tum when performing? She got the yeah. She oh, pukes her yeah, poops. She does. It is <laughs> a woman so, after our own hearts. <laughs> so funny and dare I say important because of whose story it's telling. It it just inherently makes it more interesting when we haven't seen these folks be the highlight of a story like this. It, it real sing street and we are the best vibes of watching a young band try to make it. Caitlin, does that sound more important to you than <laughs> Bo Burnham, a white man living inside his house and singing about it? <laughs> but he makes some good songs, Greg. He does make um, some good songs. He makes some good songs, and he makes me cry and feel things at, by watching this. Doesn't but, it all um, hurt it for you that like uh, he lives with his wife, and that's just like his like house that's also on his property? Yeah, like that house is in his backyard. Yeah. He's fine. He's doing okay. <laughs> how, how dare this comedian create a story, and it's not all true? <laughs> well, but isn't the, isn't the tension increased by like I'm just like you? Look at me living in this little house, just like you live in a little house, and then you're like, well, no, nah, he's going and kissing his wife in his big mansion. <laughs> I didn't know but, that. <laughs> I, I think I think you can hit on the anxieties we're all going through, and then he yeah. is still going through, like, relating. I, I think comedians and stand-up specials have this shitty tightrope they have to walk of, like, it better be exactly true or it's bullshit, but I, mean, I don't think it is. I got this email from the board who told me that they were very confused as to where to put this. Is this TV comedy? Is this TV drama? Or is this film? Uh, yeah, because mm. it's kind of like a movie, right? I mean, it's a one-off. It's like an hour and a half long. It's a comedy special. This, uh, have we it's ever a, had a comedy special? No, it's a comedy special, that, and we've never done that before. But I think technically, by like Emmy terms, it's a comedy special, so it goes on this mm-hmm. bracket. But it could have gone on all of those, including, going back to what Caitlin said, album. Because there's yeah. some fucking banger songs on this thing. Dude, there really are some banger songs. That song about the internet? Yeah. There's my nephew, my nephews women. can sing that whole thing. <laughs> Phoebe Bridgers uh, does an awesome cover of that funny feeling. Uh, Ryan, say a little bit more about We Are Lady Parts because I, I feel like we don't have a ton of representation for this show, and I'm afraid we're missing something if we just put Bo Burn through this band, uh, this collection of five girls. We when we think when the average American white uh, person thinks about Muslims, they think about one thing. And I think that this show does an incredible job of showing, like, there's so many different types of Muslim people. And uh, this show sort of has it all, almost in a, uh insulting way. Like, in a Burger Kid King's Club. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, As if there the are types, types and they have different types. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when you see these girls together and when they're clicking... As far as like what we think music should be, what we think society should be, what we think friendship should be. This show, guys, fuck. This fucking show. I cannot <laughs> believe how good it is. And it's six episodes. And yeah. I will cheat and say that that's like, uh, you should vote for it because it's not that much watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to the voting. Number six, We Are Lady Parts versus number 11, I don't know Bo Burnham. What much Ryan, more can be what said should it be? About we Are Lady Parts. With Bo Burnham. Uh, I think it's had its time. Uh, we Are Lady Parts. I have to agree with Cassie. You see it? You know what? Uh, we Are Lady Parts. I'd love to see that. Caitlin? Mike? Yes, We Are Lady Parts. Books? We Are Lady Parts. Yeah, it's... Again, it's funny what happens when you restrict like the casting, and suddenly you have to cast certain types of actors, how you can find so many funny ones. And then it's like, okay, back to just casting white people as everything. I'm very excited to watch We Are Lady Parts. I believe that's a BBC Three show, so check that out. That's right. my favorite BBC. That's Because that's kind of like the looser, fun BBC. I know. I just like it's to be a little bit It's not the trash fun, of BBC. Four. Right. Four is literal pornography. Four is three disgusting is... garbage. <laughs> It's not the pomposity of two or one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so moving on is Reservation Dogs. I'm so excited. Um, yeah. Southside, Starstruck. What? What We Do in the Shadows, Hacks, The Other Two, The Only Murders in the Building, and We Are Lady Parts. We did it. Though, amongst those comedies is your 2021 best comedy of the year. 
When we come back, we'll talk about drama. Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening so far. And let me just tell you that everything ahead of this commercial is much better than what came before it. That's my guarantee. While I have you here, let me tell you about a website. It's called yourpopfilter.com. And it's everything you need that's related to pop filter. Everything Mike, everything Ryan, everything Greg, everything Cassie, everything is there at yourpopfilter.com. While you're there, go to yourpopfilter.com slash Amazon. Make that your new Amazon bookmark and do your shopping from there. That way we get a little piece of the action and Amazon doesn't. Make sure you're also listening to everything that Pop Filter has to offer, which includes the Superhero Show Show, a podcast that covers every single TV show that's based on a comic book or comic book property, and Movie of the Year, where we sit down and try and figure out what is the single greatest movie of any given year. That's Superhero Show Show, that's Movie of the Year, and that's yourpopfilter.com. Rate, subscribe, review, bye! Oh, ha, ha, ha. We just got back from uh, TV comedy, and Greg, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Do Do you think you did a wonderful job? I think I did a serviceable that actually, Greg, job. Shut the fuck up, okay, so. Kate, Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin, do you yeah. think Greg mm-hmm. did a wonderful job? Um, I think I, I think Greg did pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give you um four point nine stars out of notes, five. Notes, 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 notes. <laughs> uh, well, now it's time. Shut up, Caitlin. Now it's time to get serious. <laughs> With TV drama, and we bring in our most serious senior correspondent, McKenna. Hey, what's up? Yes, that is what I'm known for, and I'm very excited to kick off this bracket. I'm all about the drama. I thrive on it. It fuels me, and um, I have a lot of opinions, and it just overall helps. So um, we are going to not start off this uh, show with everything that is currently in the bracket but we're going to talk about what should have been on this list that did not quite make it and you know maybe i'll like your suggestion probably not but maybe there's a chance so tell me what you want to add to this list um ryan what show do you think should have made the dramas mckenna there was a uh, i would say the biggest part of 2021 probably going on the uh century of the year is that superhero show show had its 400th episode and the way that we celebrated was we pit 64 TV shows based on comic books in a bracket, and the winner was DC's Legends of Tomorrow. And the fact that that is not on this bracket is ridiculous to me. For a this second, a I thought you were going to put season this current season of Superhero Show Show, and I was a little <laughs> worried. <laughs> well, obviously, if I had one more second to think, then I would have done that. But instead, I'm going to go with Legends of Tomorrow, which this season... It took our gang back to like the the Roaring Thirties with Bonnie and Clyde like shit, and it was a nonstop delight. All right. right, thank you for that uh, submission, Caitlin. What yeah. drama do you think should have been on this list? So I, um, Mike actually mentioned this in the last in the comedy section, but I think it it works in dramas a lot better too. And I think last year it was in the drama um, section. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the Great Brack back in oh, hopes yeah. that it sticks on <laughs> sticks on this bracket um because i really enjoyed season two of the great I... and um it's funny and also i learned stuff and it's drama and i feel <laughs> things so i i would like the great to be here thank you i agree i think it fits in both categories and it's definitely worth talking about all right mike great has been stolen i don't know if that was your choice for this bracket as well but what else do you wish sh- was on this list there's this little show that no, I've never heard anybody in real life talk about, but everybody who watches it fucking loves it. And I think because its premise sounds like a joke, is what if Mike Coulter, who was Luke Cage and a team, took on X Files type supernatural things? But it's supposed to be legit fucking awesome. So I'm going to put forth evil should be on this bracket. As somebody who helped with making the bracket happen, like I helped the board, uh-huh. evil was in and out of the bracket the entire time. And it sounds so dope. It, it seems exactly up all of our alleys. Also, can we give a cheers to this is the first bracket that we're going to go through uh, where the good fight did not make it. Hey, wait, was, so, we think we think. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh. Cass, Cassie might suggest it. But. <laughs> Big fan. Shout out to the opening credits for the good fight. <laughs> we love it. Yep. <laughs> Eight Talk about in. it every single time. <laughs> all right, Cassie, is the good fight going to be your pick or do you have something else for dramas that should have made this list? 
No, it absolutely will not. I have something else. And I think we've established this is the year of docs and the year we're allowing Netflix stuff on. So I'm going to be... There was um, a, ser- a series of docs called the Untold series. There's one in particular, Untold Crimes and Penalties. And this is about... Li- Bear with me on this one. A dude in New Jersey who owns a trash company that is connected to the mob yeah, okay. buys a minor league hockey team, <laughs> gives this minor league hockey team to his son who is still in high school and 17 lets him years run old. It. 17 years old. <laughs> Little what Big more? League? <laughs> and his son was like, how do I make this successful? I based off the Mighty Ducks. What more do you fucking want, you guys? It has drama. It has comedy. It has it all. Everybody should watch it. It's amazing. If uh, if we ever like think of a show, we should have Cassie sell it. Like She should, <laughs> she should do the meetings. This show is so good, though. Cassie told me to watch it, and uh, I was a little sicky, and this was it brought me to life. It really brought me to life. It was so fun. It's a good one. It's a good doc. But listen, a lot of drama. A too. lot the, of drama. The FBI comes very hard after this whole family, <laughs> and it's it's intense. They hate the Mighty Ducks. They hate the Mighty Ducks. It's apparently the family that's the Sopranos is based upon too. Yeah, the dude. So. This is what started the Sopranos, basically. Uh, all right, thank you for that, Cassie. And finally, Greg, what is your drama that should have been on this list? What if I told you that the hit video game? League of Legends was going to <laughs> create an animated show for Netflix. You would say to me, I don't care. That is stupid. Stop talking to me. But actually, Arcane League of Legends is a re- against all odds, it feels like to me, is a really good show with incredibly high production values. The animation's incredible. The cast of characters, including Haley Steinfeld, who literally must be working nonstop. Like there are other <laughs> actresses, yo. You can find somebody else to be not as your... good as Haley. But she's amazing. Yeah, I'm not complaining, I guess. I mean, also, she's... if you're gorgeous, you get special rules as far as the energy goes. You get extra energy. That's true. I can look to my own life and see how that's yeah. <laughs> I, I I was gonna say that about my own life, but yeah, you said it, Greg. I I have literally like no idea how it's connected to like the lore of the actual game because as much as I love video games I've never played League of Legends but this show is really you don't have to care about League of Legends or know about it at all it's very very entertaining and very interesting the two shows that almost made the bracket were Evil and Arcane and like that's insane like you would think that people would just write the show up and not even watch it in order to criticize it or watch five you know, minutes but- of it if you watch five minutes of it you'll be like no this is pretty good actually <laughs> All right. So you've given me some good suggestions. Unfortunately, I'm only going to pick two to make it on that. One of those is evil. I was very excited uh, about the show. Very sad to see it get kicked off. And um, I'm going to have that replace the Beatles. Get back. What, what the, the shit? Oh, I'm whoa, sorry. Whoa, I'm making whoa, 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 Hold up. Hold up. You put it in the right. on this list. That. McKenna, you Invincible is on that. this list. Oh, shit. I didn't see that. But uh, There's no. so many Marvel and comic book shows on this list. You asked me to host. I'm pissing some people <laughs> up, but you made some mistakes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm oh very excited for Evil. Um, I'm putting it in because I know Ryan's going to resist. It's there. It's on the bracket. Uh, yeah, I just so happened. happy. I'm so happy. Uh, and the other one going McKenna. is Invincible because I um, didn't didn't love that, and that's going to be replaced by The Great. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. So I think there it's you the go. First I've ever Those are the, the two bracket. that made it. Um, I've made some people angry already, and this isn't even the full show I'm hosting. Ryan is regretting what? so fucking much. The fuck? <laughs> the Beatles we, could have I mean, won the whole thing. I think yeah. this is probably because we grew up listening to the Beatles, because that's yeah. how old we are. Yeah. We were born in 1954. No, yeah. so. Just, okay, so we won't be able to talk about it, but here's the pitch. They have three weeks to write a whole new album and perform for the first time in years together in front of a live studio audience. And do they work real hard? No. They take every weekend off, and they dick around and play TV <laughs> theme songs whenever they can. They essentially wait for Paul McCartney to just do it. It's so much tension. <laughs> there's, a, there's a part towards the end of chapter one where he's like, guys, I don't want to be the asshole who's always saying this is what we need to do, but what you're doing makes me be the asshole. Opinions? I, and they're I've, all like, never oh, related, I, I've never related to a character more. I know! <laughs> And how many times were like uh, McCartney's like, oh, I just wrote the song, get back, and then it would like on like the the Chiron at the bottom of the screen would say, get back, 
McCartney Lennon. What do you mean McCartney? But there were times Lennon what was are you talking about. There was a time Lennon's not even in the room. They're like, "Oh, Lennon's late again." And Harrison helps McCartney finish the song and still says McCartney <laughs> Lennon. What the fuck, man? Har- Harrison wrote a song called "Lennon is late and isn't here," and then it said Harrison Lennon at the bottom. <laughs> What the fuck? All right, get back. It's just gone. That's how we do it. <laughs> That's just how we do it. I'm so proud of you both. I'm so I happy. You I feel like I've just unleashed a monster, and uh, it's going to haunt me for the rest of my days. But those are the demon. official changes. Um, we're going to get right into these brackets and start kicking more shows off the show. Um, yeah, and see what we... I don't even know what word. See what we get this uh, down to. So the first bracket, we have Succession, a show that I absolutely know took over the internet for quite some time. Going up against the one of the two Marvel shows that has made this bracket, and that is Loki. Ryan, what did you think about Succession? Oh, man. This was... This was it. This was everything TV was for this year. Of just, like, do not... Of like, my wife and I would, like refresh hbo max on our tv <laughs> uh, every sunday night just because like it wasn't just about like getting spoilers it was like i had to see what this goddamn roy family was doing every week it was insane fuck off fuck off, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> and then you know you felt like you were very much tied into the zeitgeist too right like you got to react along with the rest of the world to every little thing that happened but i think a lot like bad men this was the most like uh, soap opera e show of the year, but also the best made, like the most well shot. Mm-hmm. Like they brought in directors to make sure that these screenplays were directed the fuck out of. And one and, of the funniest shows too, right? Like it's in the dramas, oh. and it definitely is a drama, but it's hilarious. That's the thing is that somebody brought up the great for TV comedy. You could have brought this up too. Like yeah. this is mm-hmm. one of the funniest shows on TV. It's so good. It's so brilliant. Um, there's a reason it's number one. Uh, going up against the 16th seed, Caitlin, will you talk about Loki? Tell us what, yes. what this show brought. So Loki, uh, it breaks into the multiverse. So this is where we first get a view of the multiverse of the Marvel Universe. And we get um, a great Tom Hiddleston as well as an oh, oh, oh. <laughs> A Wilson brother. I was going to call him Olsen. He's not Olsen, an Olsen, Olsen twin. He's a uh, uh, Owen Wilson is in this, and it's it's fantastic. Wow, it's it's a fun wow. show. Wow. Wow. wow, it's a great show. I really enjoyed it. Uh, did anyone else agree with Caitlin? Think it's a great show, or yeah, do we have some differing opinions? Hiddleston and uh, Wilson are an awesome duo together, and then Hiddleston and D Sophie D. I forget her last name, or another duo together. Maybe Hiddleston's just very charming and bounces off of fucking <laughs> everybody well great. But letting him relax and, and really own this character in a way the movies haven't was, was an awesome idea. And the internet is stupid. And one of the best episodes of the show, the internet got mad at it and said, quote, unquote, nothing happened while these two characters just carved open their insides and revealed them to each other. The train oh God, episode, I love that episode of Loki yeah. and Sophie. Fuck you, internet. That episode like, rules. That Stop going one. on the internet. That's true. <laughs> they but just no, make me angry. It- it's just uh, Loki, who was like uh, anti, sort of like, uh, I don't like anything. And then Owen Wilson, who just, no matter what, can't help being like, that's really great, bud. <laughs> I love that for wow. you. With this wow. side backstory of he wants a jet ski. What's <laughs> yes, yes, he wants a jet, ski. <laughs> jet ski. This was all a test you all passed because uh, I was getting pissed off going off the internet after watching this and having people seen people say it's boring. This was a great show. Definitely Chumps. belongs on the drama bracket. Uh, however, I don't know if it has enough strength to move on. So let's put it to the test. Let's go to a vote. Greg, what are you voting for? I liked Loki, but it's not even close. Succession. All right. Ryan. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if there was like double or triple votes, yeah. it's Succession. <laughs> Cassie. If I could have like quadruple votes, um, Loki. Oh, come on, Cassie. <laughs> All right. No, that's not a real thing, quadruple votes. <laughs> You're crazy. Caitlin, um, yeah, I'm gonna jump on the quadruple votes. It's it's definitely Loki. All right, and Mike. Look, I loved Loki, but Succession is one of the best shows on TV. It's yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that. My vote would have been for Succession as well. That moves forward. Loki is fantastic, but Succession is doing everything a drama should, and it is amazing. Our next bracket is Midnight Mass versus my pick. Kevin can fuck himself. Um, and Mike, what did you think of Midnight Mass? 
Midnight Mass is the third Netflix series from Mike Flanagan, who gave us The House on Haunting Hill and The Haunting of Bly Manor. Other House. The Other House. <laughs> another. Uh, this is different because no big mansion is being haunted, but instead it's uh, a little island. Uh, maybe 128 people live on this island, and then things go weird. The first episode, almost nothing supernatural happens, and goddamn, I would watch that show too. Just watching this island uh, that's slowly dying, and there's fishermen, and they have their own weird rituals because there's only 100 people who they really get to know each other. It is fascinating. And then when shit goes awry... It stays fascinating. Shout out to Rahul Kohli, who was uh, Ravi on iZombie. He oh, hell yeah, dude. He rocks in this. He's a sheriff. He's a Muslim sheriff on a small island of all white Christians. And let me tell you, folks, he's treated exactly as how you think he would be. It, <laughs> this show was awesome. I think it's uh, it's not... It goes Hill House, Midnight Mass, then Bly Manor, and Mike Flanagan's works. Uh, you should all check it out. Does it lose steam at some point, Mike? I got the sense just reading like the tea leaves that it sort of like it starts off really strong and then maybe kind of peters out. I don't think episodes peter out, but there are moments where they're like, what okay. if a character got to just say the premise of the show for 10 minutes in a monologue? <laughs> and I would say that peters out. <laughs> Uh, but the premise is absolutely fascinating. Um, and then we have our second, our ninth seed, which is Kevin can fuck himself. Uh, Greg, I know you've watched some of the show or all of the show. What did you think? The premise of the show basically is mixing the sitcom relationship between like it's one of these sitcoms where um the woman is way too pretty for the guy, way too good for the guy. And the guy is like borderline abusive. Uh, in his like indifference and his 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 lack of of attention to her, and then it adds a dramatic component where you break out of that sitcom and you literally see like their real life in which it where that is made explicit that he is like basically negligent and almost unto abusive, um, and it, the show un slowly unveils itself and it works. Uh, as sort of like, it's not that the sitcom is funny, it doesn't work in that way, but it, the sitcom is a great send-up of sitcoms, like like King of Queens or Everybody Loves Raymond or something, where really when you're laughing, at the end of it, you're like, this guy is so lousy, though. Like, w What is the show really saying? And Kevin Can Fuck Himself really like engages with that directly. Yeah, I think it challenges. I grew up watching all those sitcoms and just thought they were normal and then realized, <laughs> no, those are piece of shit representations of marriage. And like in Married then... with Children, Al Bundy like wants to kill Peg Bundy, despite the fact that she is like one of the most beautiful women of all time, is always down to clown. And he acts like he's like so set upon to even share a life with her. He should be so fucking lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that... Uh... Greg is shining a lot onto his life, and I think that this <laughs> th this show does shine a lot onto my life as well because I am an overweight person who has a wife that is too hot for me, and this like it, this is supposed to hurt, but I think the show confused is confused with like which premise does it is it more interested in, and it doesn't really do a great job of making the sitcom part funny or interesting. It's just sort of a waste of time. Oof. But the part with Annie Murf Annie Murphy in the AMC zone is really good. And I wonder if this show was a hit because of the premise or because of Annie Murphy, hot off Shit's Creek. Did people just follow her to watch that? And she is amazing. She she is handling both parts of the show amazingly. I definitely think, yeah, she's definitely some of the reason it got picked up. I didn't think the sitcom parts were supposed to be funny. I thought they were supposed to fail to hit they're like satire. Yeah, it was definitely not supposed to be humorous there. So it sold me on that scene. Um, but I, I do see that to its point. I do think Anna Murphy deserves a lot of credit for this movie or for this show. It's absolutely fantastic for her. Uh, let's go to a vote. Um, Ryan, Midnight Mass or Kevin Can Fuck Himself? Uh, follow up point, McKenna. Who gives a shit about Midnight Mass? <laughs> it's Andy can, uh, or Kevin Can Fuck Himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, Greg, Midnight Mass or Kevin Can Fuck Himself? Yeah, uh, Kevin Can Fuck Himself is just is such an interesting premise, and um, she's such a great actress, so Kevin Can Fuck Himself. All right, Cassie. Uh, Kevin Can F Himself. Oh, she won't say I fuck. I can't say fuck. <laughs> I can't say <laughs> <laughs> All right, Caitlin. Yeah, fuck him. 
and Mike. Look, I'm always d- down to go swinging for genre, and I love horror, but I think what Kevin Can Fuck Himself is trying to do is more interesting than what Midnight Mass is trying to do. Also, does anybody know if Kevin James has reacted to a show titled as a direct <laughs> middle finger yeah. to his own life? Like, Is he aware of this? Yeah, I think he jumped into his big pool of money and swung <laughs> to the other side. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Kevin Kupak himself does move forward. In our next bracket, we have Mayor of East Town versus the third, which is fourth seed versus thirteenth seed Yellow Jackets. Um, Greg, what did you think of Mayor of East Town? I loved Mayor of East Town. It was so interesting. It had a little bit of what uh, Mike was talking about with Midnight Mass, which is like this very insular Delaware community. And they all know each other. They all grew up with each other. They like they all know multiple generations of everybody's family. Um, and now someone has gone missing and, exa- you know, someone has murdered. What, what has happened here? And um, Kate Winslet is just like serving this entire show. She's so funny. She's so like world weary. Um, got that real like sort of... Uh, um, acerbic humor and 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 world weariness and yeah just a good time especially considering it's it's a a murder mystery so that gives you a little bit something else to pay attention to there's a part of mayor of east town where one of the neighbors goes to kill uh kate winslet and like or just like uh, intimidate her throw milk things through the window and then his wife is stopping him and then mayor drives off and then the husband uh drives off and so it's just the wife and it's just uh, Mayor's mom. And Mayor's mom is like, hey, Sabrina, you want to come in for some coffee? <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, they will do these terrible things to each and other. And the mom is Jean Smart again, right? Yeah, and it's nice. Jean Smart. Yeah. And they're all just... Completely they're... different role from Hacks. Like Same neighborhood. I... Let's just come in and have some tea. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be this guy, but it's not a Delaware town, Greg. It's Delaware County. Delco represent suburbs of Philadelphia. That's oh, why people sorry. are pieces of shit to each other. <laughs> <laughs> It's Wallingsford, Pennsylvania. Whoop, whoop. Okay, since you're so proud of that, were the accents authentic? Oh, you have it. Have you seen it yet, Mike? No, but yes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Does it then. sound like uh, some sort of ape was turned into a human and tried to learn English? There you go. <laughs> Don't go. Hey, y'all, give me a hot dog. We've got that Mayor of Easttown going up against Yellow Jackets. Ryan, what do you think about Yellow Jackets? I watched two of these last night, and holy shit. What I, is it? <laughs> so what a it? high school soccer team crash lands in the Canadian forest. Okay. And they're not found for 19 <laughs> months. So it's just this group of girls who have to figure out how. So it's uh, Girl Lord of the Flies. Okay. Uh, but then some of them make it out. And the, some of them that make it out are played by Melanie Linsky. Nice. Juliette Lewis and Christina Ricci. Oh, cool. And they have to deal with their life after that, that they were left in this forest or for 19 months. And it is, and it's, it's awesome. It's, the, it's, it's, it's not like lost supernatural, but it is that whole lost thing of like, what the fuck is going on on this island, quote unquote. And yeah, we were upset that we had to go to bed. <laughs> it's a show that's like everything in my little nightmares could be made of that I want to watch more than anything. And I don't <laughs> yeah. know how to feel about that. Is it like if Lost, if the plane crashed in the Blair Witch Woods or something like that? There we go. <laughs> that's okay. a good way to put it. But uh, also, yeah, like they're just, they're still high school soccer player girls when they land and they act like it. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like clueless Blair Witch. That should that says a lot, um, and I think we're ready to put this to a vote, and we're gonna start off with Mike. What are you voting for, Mayor of East Town or Yellow Jackets? You know what? I don't like how this show denigrates where I'm from. Fuck Mayor of East Town. My vote's for Yellow Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. I I think Yellow Jackets is gonna be amazing, but I have to go with Mayor. Greg. I have HBO and not Showtime. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin. Uh, I'm going to agree with Greg. Mayor of East Town. <laughs> Cassie. Greg has such a valid point, but I do. <laughs> wow, that is. <laughs> um, I'm still going to vote Yellow Jackets. <laughs> All right. I get the deciding vote. Um, I'm going to piss some people off. I'm not excited by Mayor of East Town. And oh. so I'm going with Yellow Jackets. That is moving oh, forward. Shit. Um, and this is why you maybe question 
having me host some shows. We're going to move right on <laughs> to our number five seed against our number 12 seed. That is WandaVision versus Evil. Uh, Cassie, what do you think about WandaVision? WandaVision was the Disney, the Disney Marvel little piece that got everybody hyped as hell for all the ones that were going to come. This like took over like everywhere I went, people were talking about WandaVision and it was just like the first episodes were like kind of their own thing of you trying to figure it out yet imitating each of these periods and these type of shows so well. And then it brought in so much of the Marvel universe so where you were like, Oh damn, this is actually vital. And you were like, they're actually doing stuff with these Disney plus shows. And, um, it was, it's good. It's got a, the cast is amazing. Catherine Hahn, every the uh Elizabeth Will no, what's Olsen. her name? Olsen. Olsen. Olsen and Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's amazing cast, amazing all around. All right, thank you. Does anyone else want to add anything about WandaVision? I, My I, mom watched it. My mom watched <laughs> the Marvel thing. That should and she sell loved everybody. It. I'm sure the evil is a good show, but like you have Half of the panel is from Superhero Show Show, and like one of our shows made it onto this list, yeah. and we are ready to move this shit into legitimacy. And like, it's fuck. like a high seed, too. Yeah. Yeah, fuck so evil. Uh, <laughs> before That's we completely fuck evil, fuck evil. Uh, <laughs> Mike, why don't you tell us about your pick that made it onto the bracket for a brief time? Uh, I'm in love with Mike Coulter. <laughs> if you saw Luke Cage, he was one of the highlights of that. If you've seen uh, early seasons of The Good Wife, not The Good Fight, but The Good Wife, he he plays uh, a reoccurring character there, and he's in very intimidating and handsome. Uh, and now he <laughs> fights supernatural things with a with a wacky ragtime crew. Come on, it's great. But it sounds great. WandaVision. <laughs> I think we know how this vote's going to go, but I still need to ask Greg, what are you voting for? WandaVision. Ryan. WandaVision. Cassie. WandaVision. Caitlin. WandaVision. And Mike. <laughs> yes, WandaVision. All right. That was easy. See, you guys were so upset about the Beatles being out, but that would have gone out this bracket anyway, so I feel justified. Probably true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> We're on to seed number two, the Underground Railroad, versus seed number 15, Station 11. Um, Ryan, tell us about the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad is Barry Jenkins' first oh, shit. foray into television. Um, he's the guy who directed Moonlight, and this show <laughs> is uh, more than TV in that way. We're like, I know that TV is better than ever, and I know that it's getting closer to what movies are, but I've never seen a TV show like this. Uh, bear with me here when I ex uh, explain that it imagines what if the Underground Railroad was a little literal Underground Railroad. Like there's a literal train underneath the ground. I know that sounds dumb, but... Yeah, what but we... half the listeners are just like, as opposed to what? Yeah, Because yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I really did think that was the case for a long, long time. Um, but this show is absolutely incredible. And we get in the beginning a lot of really, really, really hard things to see. Like drawn and quartered, we get uh Whoa. uh we get people like uh strung up and just burned to death. But once we get through that shit of like now you know what kind of show you're in for, uh we get these characters who are sort of getting trying to get through this slavery thing as if it's a phase. You know, like they're they're like we can make it through this, and it is incredibly empowering. I don't know why you would come hot off the Oscar win of Moonlight and just like, oh, I'll do a TV show for you, Amazon, that nobody will watch. But he did it, and it looks exactly like you think it would. I have never seen a TV show like this. It is the most well-shot, well-directed shit I've ever seen. All right, and that is going up against um, Station Eleven, which is a... TV show made off of a dystopian novel. Greg, I think you've seen some of this. What do you think so far about Station Eleven? Station Eleven invites us to imagine a world where in 2020 there was a big pandemic. Um, and what? that's just that's sort of fantastical. Fun. I think that's just sort of like a <laughs> Can fun Can we thing. suspend our disbelief enough? Yeah, uh, but it, it's about the extreme interconnectedness of humans. It's about what do we do with the past? How do we approach the future it's about can what is safety and and how can we achieve it and is it something that is is permanently achievable um it's about adaptability and it's about um 
a a troupe that performs Shakespeare in the post apocalyptic uh, in post apocalyptic America, but that's always like the that's always the elevator pitch. It's about so much more than that, um, and it's really cool. It's really well made. It's very interesting, and it's it's very different than the book. I read the book. It's way different than that in a lot of good ways. These are. I would say that this is uh, my number one and number three shows of the year. I love Station Eleven, but Underground Railroad, and not that me and Greg are in a competition. It's no. just that Underground Railroad is you. You have to see it. It's it. It is that amazing. Also, Station Eleven is a, a guy that uh, uh, the dir- the director for most of the episodes is a guy that was directed a bunch of Atlanta, directed a little bit of Barry, directed a lot of Legion. The director of Underground Railroad directed Moonlight. <laughs> I'm now just... they do feel like they're in competition. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, all but right, well... I, I, I I haven't seen the Underground Railroad, but just based on what Ryan has said, Station Eleven is a fi- like a fine show, a good it's show, a, but I don't think it delivers show. all of this, all no. the stuff that he said. I I do have one question for either of you having who have watched it. Well, I understand Station Eleven. Uh huh. If I have under not what seen circumstance? Stations one through ten. Uh. <laughs> you scamp! You cad! Uh. <laughs> I love how me and Greg laugh wholeheartedly. <laughs> Because we've only heard this joke 1,000 times, but all the girls are like, fuck you. <laughs> Fucking fuck you. It comes you back idiot. around. It comes back around. When you are your uh, most sick of it. Eventually, you'll, you'll, you'll learn to enjoy yes, it. Yeah. When you get the most sick of it you've ever been, and you feel like, if I hear that one more time, I'll die. The next time you hear it, it's actually funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're not quite there yet, but here's to hoping. Keep on telling those bad jokes, Mike. Um, but let's put this to a vote. Uh, Greg, what are you going to vote for, Underground Railroad or Station Eleven? I'm a little afraid that because I haven't seen the Above Ground Railroad or the Ground Railroad, <laughs> I won't get the Underground do, do, Railroad. Yes! Do, do, yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, pull it together, Greg. Uh, but yeah, Underground Railroad. All right, and Cassie. I'm hanging on by so little. It's going to be Underground Railroad. <laughs> Caitlin. Yeah, same as these. <laughs> Ryan. I think we're, we're killing doing, our friends. We're we're doing this to two people with COVID. Yeah, too straight up. <laughs> this is starting to feel sick. Uh it's Underground Railroad for sure. And Mike. Yeah, it has to be Underground Railroad. I do think people should still watch uh Station Eleven though. Um nope. They're burning it. <laughs> no, it's done. Nope. Never mind. You can never you. see it again. Let's move on to our number seven seed, which is Squid Game versus tenth seed for all mankind. Um, Mike, you've seen Squid yes. Game. What do you think about it? Uh, came out the perfect time where I think it was in between one of the uh, not in between. It was on the the valley of one of the lockdowns of one of the the variants. So we were it's all at the home Tiger again. Tiger King of this generation. Yes, and man, infinitely better. I don't feel like a piece of shit for watching Squid Game, and it is uh, a great takedown of capitalist society. As these people have to play children's game for money, and if they lose, they die, and there can only be one. And just like everything else that comes out of Korea, it's fucking phenomenal. It was it was awesome. Uh, I watched one episode so far. And, man, it is a clown show. Like, it's a straight-up comedy. Yes. I had no idea. Based on what I had heard, I thought it was going to be this very well, serious indictment of capitalism. And it was like, I don't have any money. Yeah. I bet a lot. That I think that I've, I'm now that I've seen a few um, Korean films and TV shows, uh, that is the rope-a-dope that they like oh, to yeah. do, where they mix genres. And so at first, you're just... I, I totally agree with you, Ryan. And when they resolve that into just the grim tale of the of the actual show it hits even harder because you're like i miss when everybody was just being goofy <laughs> right the the start of the host uh for the movie from years ago is like a children's comedy uh-huh. some of the yeah. it's so goofy and slapstick and then it's, things get brutal the host is literally once upon a time and then you then yes it just takes over all right so that's going up against for all mankind which is an alternate uh universe in which russia wins the um Basic space race, space race, space race yeah. <laughs> Trying to get to the moon first and essentially uh, changes the entire path of the universe. Um, a lot of critics have talked about how great this second season is of For All Mankind. Like, this is like they really changed the show. But compared to Squid Game, 
Which really did own the internet for, yeah. what, six weeks straight? Yeah. Long which is night. hard to do. Mm-hmm. For all mankind, go fuck itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is basically a slammy D. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I, I I have only seen season one and one episode of season two for for all mankind. Um, you watch for all mankind. I have watched for I have Apple TV, so it's there. You're the what one. a rich nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you get it free when you buy a phone <laughs> for a year. <laughs> I bought a phone this year. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I have seen some of it. I do think it's good. I don't think it's definitely um, the worst show that you could, you know, waste some quarantine time. It's astronauts with guns, right? Yeah, guns. I like that part of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's out of space. You like that. <laughs> space force. <laughs> Hey, Mike, are you glad that you had your bachelor party like three years, four years ago, where we did True American from New Girl and not this next year where we did Squid Games from Squid Game? Yeah, because why I love being friends with you guys is I never know how much to trust you. So if you told me that was the pitch, I would not know if I was about to get shot or not. (laughs) I think it's time for us to put this to a vote, even though I'm pretty sure I know which direction this is going to go in. Greg, Squid Game or For All Mankind? Squid Game, Squid Game. Mike. Uh, I'm won over by Gunstronauts. I'm voting for all mankind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ryan. Squid game, squid game. Cassie. Uh, squid game. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin. Squids. <laughs> Surprises me. I don't think you'll like watching the show. You vote for it now. No, <laughs> I've already, I've already walked into someone walking it, watching it, and I was like, "This is not for me." You <laughs> walked into a lot of people. Yeah. Into <laughs> all of these rooms, <laughs> just walk. There's Caitlin just moves so with twelve many... people, just barges into all of their doors. You know, There's Caitlin. So many it... rooms with TVs. <laughs> In your apartment complex, only your apartment is your apartment. <laughs> Stop walking into other apartments. What are you guys watching? Oh, not for me. The little Netflix sound, and she barges on in. <laughs> <Do-do-do. Do-do. laughs> it's me throwing the door open. <laughs> <Do-do>. <laughs> All right, so Squid Game does move on. Bad news for Gunstronauts. Maybe next time we can (laughs) get that uh, on the bracket. But now we're going to talk about our number three seed, the White Lotus versus 14, which is the great. Um, Cassie, you've seen the White Lotus. What do you think about it? Mm -hmm. It Honestly, for a drama, good. List. I saw this on the list and I was like, thank you for putting this on here. This, uh, the White Lotus is about, um, do you want to rich, watch rich white people, um, be terrible on an island? And it's pretty entertaining to watch them be terrible on an island. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, the, it, the drama is literally just watching how terrible white people are. And it's, it's, it's what you expect, but also very good. So the succession, but, like- but on an island. But on an <laughs> island. But make it tropical. Manhattan's an island. <laughs> <laughs> that seems very obvious, but it's not. Like, the depth that these terrible white people go to be terrible are unreal. infinitely, yeah, unreal. Get real at and the same time. Is this Mike White, Ryan? Uh-huh. The guy who did Enlightened? The guy who did, yeah, Enlightened, Chuck and Buck, and School of Rock. I love this guy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, they, and it's- the HBO was like, hey, Mike White. We're fucked. We have no shows. It's COVID. Can you go figure something out? And he was like, I could take eight actors to a Hawaiian hotel. <laughs> yeah, do that. Do that. And, and, and meanwhile, he Hawaii this. is like, please don't come here. <laughs> Why, like, we'll be right that. there. Don't worry. We're, we're on our way. We're a show about how white people do whatever they want. <laughs> 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 and this is going up against the great. Caitlin, this was your pick. It did make the bracket for the time being. Tell us about the great. The Great, I know Mike talks about it a little bit, but um, it's it's just Catherine the Great. We're, we're learning about the story, and it's a comedy. It's hilarious. Um, Catherine starts out pregnant in this season two and um, still wants to kill Peter. So it's that funny on the line of Peter is awful, but also everyone's so horny, and they just want to fuck each other. So it's, it's very... And, Catherine, and, and Caitlin, you like this. That's surprising. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> the dynamic but, of she hates him, but yes. he like is in love with her, yeah. and she is nominally in power, but he kind of does whatever he wants. It like the sh- it, That pays off so much. That's the mm. weirdest dynamic I've ever seen on a show, yeah. where one character... <laughs> Wants to kill the other, and then have the you guys never ever like, in love? You never met my me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an interesting, funny story, and I feel like 
I, I love it. I hope it goes forward. But also, White Lotus sounds good too. I I I do wish that the Great could go forward, but the White Lotus is so like not only is how it was filmed is of its time, but what it filmed is of its time. Like yeah. it couldn't be more uh, of its time. Mm-hmm. What is the name of that actress who plays the one who's carrying around the ashes of her mom? <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's, oh, she's obviously amazing. always amazing, and they really like. Every that's, time she's on screen on this one, delightful. She is Cassie, off that's hinges. Stifler's mom, and that the, means nothing to you. You like you have no idea say, what I'm saying. Does she say hot dog at all during this? <laughs> if she does, then dog, she's bad. the original milf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She does say hi. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. She knows exactly what she's supposed to do in this show, and she does it. Like, she gives it to you every episode. <laughs> And then her walking away from the masseuse or whatever yeah. and just saying, uh-huh. like, you know what? I can't do it. Yep. I tried to do it, but I can't do it. You what think that, the fucking fuck? Yeah, dude. You think, like, the, the whole movie, the whole show seems like it's going to, like, reward one type of behavior. And then yeah. it's a little surprising at the end. Well, not anymore because what I said, but it would have been. <laughs> plus, and we'll talk about this on the TV drama show, but plus her uh, crying in speech over yes. her mom's ashes. She, She's going to be best actress of the year, right? Coach is underrated. Always has been. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'll agree with that. So I feel like Coolidge is swaying our votes, uh, even if this premise wasn't. Let's put it to an actual vote, though. Ryan, White Lotus versus The Great. What you get, What you voting for? I like The Great. It's White Lotus. Greg. Yeah, tough tough draw for The Great, but The White Lotus was uh, one of the bigger shows of the year. Uh, Cassie? White Lotus. Caitlin. The Great. <laughs> and Mike. I want to shout out on The Great, the the, the two leads, uh, the young fanning, her having her become more and more awful because she was like the idealist yeah. in season one, but her <laughs> realizing maybe she is also a terrible piece of shit, just like Peter. Uh, and then Nick Cole, I think, is one of the few actors who can do that. He is adorable and fucking venomously yeah. evil and just yeah. switching back mm-hmm. and forth. Uh, they are great. My vote's for The Great. All right. Uh, that is two votes for The Great, but unfortunately, it does not move on. White Lotus does. I think The Great gets a bad rap because it's kind of comedy and drama all at once, and it doesn't quite fit in either. Um, we're going to move on to our final bracket, which is our sixth seed. It's a sin versus made, which is the 11th seed. Ryan, tell us about It's a Sin. It's a Sin is a hilarious romp about six gay guys in London in the 80s. And then somebody's like, did you hear there's this disease? Oh, oh Jesus no. Christ. And then everything keeps, comes crumbling down, and it is fucking heart-wrenching. It's hilarious, and every actor is amazing. But holy shit, is it a devastating show to watch. How often are you watching a show, and it's like about a bunch of queer characters having a fun time, and then you're like, yeah. wait, what year is this set in? Wait, <laughs> what year is this set in? 1980 what? <laughs> But it's like this is a post apocalyptic show in 1985. Yeah. You know, like the disease that we always see and where zombies come in 2028 or whatever, it happens to them in this world and you watch it happen and it's crazy. But all of the actors are super fun and funny. And so it really gets you through. But this, this was a show. The well, that sounds is, depressing, but I'm sure the yeah. other one is way better, right, McKenna? <laughs> Devastating. Um, so, yeah, the next one is Made, which really kind of highlights poverty in America uh, and uh, women escaping an abusive marriage to become um, a maid and trying to provide for herself and her daughter. Uh, Should this TV have been on the comedy drama. bracket? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Very, very light, very funny. Lots of laughing moments. Um, yeah, it's it's bleak and it's got a lot of um insight into what poverty actually looks like and what is a reality for a lot of people um so there's that inescapable right like isn't the idea just like there's no way out like once you're in there's just no way out. yeah like you try to climb up as much but you realize what the like you know you're making minimum wage all the money that's going to like there's moments where she like the very first episode she is cleaning this very rich woman's house and she's starving hasn't eaten all day has to put back food because she can't afford it she needs to fill up her gas and it's just meanwhile cleaning out the fridge of this rich woman full of fresh delicious food I, i feel like we've been laughing 
for 45 minutes about TV dramas, and now we have to actually deal with the fact that, like, what TV dramas actually bring. Yeah. This is it. Boo. Real, real, yeah, <laughs> real dramatic. I'm almost afraid of this show made as if it is, like, a horror movie. Like, I, the things I've heard about this show make it sound like... Like the movie Come and See or something. Like you're, But you don't have changed. that relief of being like, yeah, yeah, but that's dramatized horror. Like yeah. you don't you don't get that from this. So. <laughs> this is going on outside my door right now. It's what's her name? Andy McDowell's daughter from uh Once Upon a Time in America? No, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Hollywood. Right? Pa- yes. That is her. Sounds like it. Yeah. We're going (laughs) to say yes. Uh, I cannot confirm that, but I'm going to anyway. Um, So, yeah, this is these are two drama dramas that we don't um, get an escape from. So let's vote on that. Greg, it's a sin versus made. I have to say I am afraid to watch this show, but uh, I I am interested in it as well. Made. All right, Ryan. Uh, I'm going to go with it's a sin. It is. It has what it takes to bring this whole bracket down. Cassie. I'm afraid to watch it, but I'm going to vote it's a sin. <laughs> Caitlin. I'm afraid to watch both of these. So <laughs> um, I'm going to go with it's a sin. And Mike. Uh, it's from the sick and twisted mind from Russell T. Davies, who helped reboot Doctor Who. He did Queer as Folk, and he did Years and Years. Also, uh, Russell T. Davies like has a show on our bracket every year. Yeah. Like the, years and years, years and years, another one's ripped. Here. Years uh, is interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to go with it's a sin. All right, can't break tradition. So it's a sin moves forward. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get to talk about AIDS in this episode. I guess that's going to be cheerful. Um, so what we have that is it for our dramas. What we have moving forward, and you can look forward to on the full show is Succession. Kevin can fuck himself. Uh, Yellow Jackets. WandaVision, The Underground Railroad, Squid Game, The White Lotus, and It's a Sin. Those are all of your dramas for... Fuck us. (laughs) (laughs) 2021. That is it. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, the rest of the show. Hola, Felterinos. I just wanted to interrupt real briefly and say thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. If you want to support us a little more directly, you can go to patreon.com slash yourpopfilter. There, depending on what tier you pick, $1 a month, $5 a month. If you're crazy, anything more than $5 a month, don't do that. You can get extra content. There's extra shows, extra series, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, you can pay for ryan to draw you a picture uh, i can write you a poem you can get the shirts off our very own backs all of that and so much more over at patreon.com slash your pop filter while you're on the internet you should check out shady monk he does all the tunes you've been listening to he's on Bandcamp. he's on spotify uh, soundcloud wherever kids get their music these days that i'm too old to know shady monk lives there uh, you can probably follow him on twitter and instagram as well that's shady monk wherever you get music Check and that's out. your 2021 preview show. Woo. I am so excited. Greg, are you excited for comedy? Do you have something that like you know is going to win? Do I have something that I think is, that is definitely going to win comedy? I am going to say that I think it's going to be Hacks. I think that we're going to all get so yeah. pumped about Hacks. I can and, see that. Yeah, so that, that's my pick. McKenna, drama, what do you think? Where are we going? Uh, This is a tough one. I think there's a lot of great dramas, but I think it's clear for me, at least. um, I feel like Succession's going to take it all. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. come on. Why would it not? (laughs) Caitlin and Cassie, where are we going with music? What do we think is going to win this bracket? Is it Olivia Rodrigo? Oh, jeez. Um, I'm I am gonna go with Olivia Rodrigo. No, I'm taking the the Swifty stand, and it's gonna be Taylor Swift. She's gonna take Taylor Swift. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Cassie, she's coming in. Cassie, and fuck you. You can't I say Taylor Swift is going to win. <laughs> I do not believe that. There's no way with the talent that we have on here that a re-release album is going to take it down when there's Little Sims and Time well, of the Creator. That's well, wild. I tried to get my mixtape on here and I couldn't get it. <laughs> so now- fuck you guys for not letting a mixtape on here. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike, where are we looking with movies? Like, What is it looking like right now? Do you think that Steven Spielberg's West Side Story can win? I, I I would love to live in that world, 
but I know this group of people, and Sean Baker had a movie come out, Ryan. Red yes, Rocket is going to take yes, this whole fucking did. thing down. Oh, man. I just... I, like, I don't care if he doesn't. I just want all five of you to watch a Red Rocket. And what the <laughs> fuck is that going to be like? And for Caitlin and Greg to converse about Red Rocket is my dream. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my dream. That is the 2021 preview show. Guys, we have so much in store for you as far as what 2021 was like. Please tune into all of it for Ryan. I'm Ryan. For Greg, I'm Mike. For Cassie, I'm McKenna. For Mike, I'm Cassie. And for McKenna, I'm Cassie. I'm Caitlin. (laughs) 